Hey guys, welcome to the Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is a roguelike, I believe is the correct term, because it, it has meta progression, but it is a very unforgiving, dark, almost, almost more, but not quite, horror-esque dungeon delve. Oh, it's just, you know what? I think it's going to be easier if I just show you, so hope you guys enjoy. proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune. Swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. step unsettled the ancient earth but we were in a realm of death and madness in the end i alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity until consciousness failed me you remember our venerable house opulent and imperial it is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Oh god, that cinematic is fantastic. I, I love that intro sequence, I really do. Hello guys, my name is Justice, and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. Now, Darkest Dungeon is about making the most of a bad situation. Quests will fail, or must be abandoned. Heroes will die. And when they die, they stay dead. Progress auto-saves constantly, so actions are permanent. The game expects a lot out of you. How far will you push your adventures? How much are you willing to risk? Aw, oh, I, I wanted to read that whole... Uh, okay, so anyway, basically, Darkest Dungeon is a fantastic roguelike game. Uh, where you play as several characters, uh, you kind of guide them on their journey into the labyrinth of the Darkest Dungeon. And there are several different dungeons that you can go into. The Darkest Dungeon is the uh, the big dungeon, you know, the main dungeon at the end of the maze. But the idea is to go through all of the dungeons and collect gear and stuff and upgrade your town. There's so many things to this game, it's going to be really hard to just give it all to you right now. So instead, let's get into the game and let the game introduce itself. But for starters... We're going to be playing, uh, not the Butcher's Circus, we're going to be playing, well, we'll add the Musketeer, sure. It's a hero class that is part of one of the DLCs for the game, so we'll keep that active. Uh, Radiant campaigns, while still challenging, are adjusted to be faster and more forgiving than normal. Suggested for your first dungeon, uh, darkest dungeon experience. Darkest normal campaigns are the original settings for the game. While there is no time limit to win, the campaign will be longer and more challenging than Radiant mode. Stygian. Stygian campaigns are not for the faint of heart. Expect no quarter, no forgiveness. You must conquer the evil within. Uh, you must conquer the evil within a time and hero death limit. Also, many gameplay settings are locked. We're going to go Radiant for our first run through. Uh, we're also going to remove Darkest. This is going to be Radiant. Or, uh, no, actually, I got this. Justified. Justified Radiance. All right, good to go. All right, guys, welcome back. We are good to go. I was having some issues, uh, or not having issues, but I was doing a couple mods. Uh, most of them are, they're all actually just quality of life and uh, aesthetics. None of them that actually make the game easier or do anything different. Uh, and uh, mostly they're skins and faster walking and faster combat decks, actually. That's really all it is. Oh, and uh, a couple different uh, variants of backgrounds for dungeons, but that's not really important. So we are ready to go. Let's dive right in. You will 
drive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. With the stagecoach destroyed and the caretaker gone, you will have to make the journey to the hamlet on foot. Alright, so we start off and we have Reynald and Dismas. These are our two playable characters at the moment. Map navigation. You are currently in a room. To move forth, click on another room on the map display. This will take you to the connecting hallway. It is W or W and or no A and D to move. Uh, not really much W and S involved, but uh, we can also move by clicking back and forth. Uh, probably going to be using W and D most of the time while I'm going. You also have access to a map that shows you kind of the dungeony area that you're in, but the old road doesn't have a whole lot to work with. Um, yeah, I think that's enough exposition. We can move along. The map is where you pick your next room. Once you clear the area, you click on the next room and it moves you forward. Hallway movement. While in a hallway, press D to move forward and A to move back. Kind of just figured that out, but uh, you can also click to move your party as well. It's kind of funny to think, like, if they didn't tell you that, how are you supposed to have moved to here, right? Kill the enemy. Combat in Darkest Dungeon is turn-based. On your hero's turn, click a skill icon, and then click on a highlighted target. If you can't select the particular skill, it's because that hero needs to be standing in a different spot or there are no valid targets. Mouse over the skill to see the requirements. Okay, so that's an interesting thing we can point out. Uh, you'll see that this one's not highlighted, right? Pistol shot requires that there be... Uh, so these four dots represent my party on the left side, and then the enemies on the right side. Uh, the red is your enemies, and your party is on the left. So he is in the correct position, being positioned two from the front, to use pistol shot. But the enemy is, not, is occupying the front space. There's no adjacent rear enemies, so he has no way... Of firing a pistol shot at this guy. Uh, yeah, so positioning is going to be an important factor as we play through the game. Grape Shot Blast, as you can see here, hits multiple enemies, and he has to be in the second or third position to fire. And it also has a chance to debuff target. Uh, so we are going to just attack with Open Vein. I think we can also use 1, 2, 3, and 4, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, we're going to go with Stunning Blow here. I can, cool. So Stunning Blow has a chance to stun the target perfect we were able to. So now it becomes the enemy's turn, but the enemy had a bleed effect on and died from the bleed. Each time you take it, or loot, each time if you take it, will occupy space in your inventory. Mouse over items to show details about them. This works in your inventory too. Press, press escape to close this window. Cool. So we got 500 gold. We can take all, we can close, uh, we'll take the 500 gold. And like it said, it takes up a slot in our inventory here. We also have a torch that you probably noticed at the top that you can add more light to by clicking on a torch in your inventory if you have one we currently don't so we can't increase the light of our torch but as the torch gets darker we'll start to take more stress and stress is a huge factor in this game uh oh and you take more damage in the darkness it's just a whole thing while exploring you will often find interactable objects click or press w to investigate them take a look at this tent all right let's investigate the tent someone has recently camped here check inside the tent Someone left valuables inside the tent. We've gained gold and onyx. Onyx is worth 500 gold per stack of onyx, and items in your inventory will stack. Like you see, there's two stacks of food, 750 gold on this stack, and there is a limit to how many things can be stacked per item. I think it's... I, I'm not going to say I know. I think onyx might be like six. You can only have so many of a certain item stacked. And as you see, we are now in dim light. Dim light increases our stress. and increases the option for monsters or enemies to crit. When an enemy crits, it increases your stress. Uh, the level below our health bar here is our stress bar, and it is very important to be aware of your stress bar and keep an eye on it. Uh, 
So tracking strap bypasses stealth and spell or de stealth gives a buff to damage, accuracy, and critical. Grape shot blast hits AoE on multiple enemies. Pistol shot does a lot of damage and more damage against mark targets. It also increases our critical chance and lowers our damage mod. Okay, and then we can also open vein here. Uh, although this target takes up two slots. He is a big or large size enemy. So a large size enemy can't be hit by, let's say, pistol shot. I can't pistol shot this guy. Actually, I can because he takes up the second slot. Apologies. Uh, but this guy doesn't take up the second slot. So we can't... Uh, we can't open Vein on him because he's technically in the third position of four. So you can see I'm clicking on him, nothing's happening. So positioning is really important and keeping track of the size of the enemies. I don't believe there are any targets uh, that you can add to your party that take up more than one slot. Uh, if there are, they've been added since last time I played and I'm not aware of them yet. So it'll be pretty interesting to find out. But I think the best play we can make here... Uh, this adds 12% to our damage. Maybe it's just tracking shots on the rear enemy. And then a pistol shot next time. You want to take him out because these enemies deal more damage than this enemy. On average. Uh, reason being, you can see the health of them. He's also squishier, so he goes down faster. So the sooner he dies, or he will die sooner than this guy. Assuming you focus him instead of him. If you focus him, you deal 12 damage, he's still alive. You deal 12 damage, this guy's dead. You know, makes sense. So he has a hero to crit 5%, hero damage 2 to 3. And hero to hit 88%. This guy, hero to hit 95%, hero to crit... 5% and hero damage 2 to 3. Uh, he he has a higher dodge level and a higher speed. He has... A, oh, I didn't mean to do that. That sucks. That was uh, the opposite of what I meant to do. I was trying to hover and I ended up clicking on him because I'm a smart person. Uh, let's go ahead and stunning blow on the frontliner here. And he just repositioned our units, which is really important to be aware of. So repositioning is something that makes life very difficult for people like the Highwaymen who want to be in a certain position to use their abilities. And moving yourself in combat takes up your entire turn. So now our Highwaymen didn't get to do anything. We've taken a lot of stress here. And this fight in general is just not going well for us, right? Uh, Zealous Accusation hits the first two slots. Uh, Bulwark of Faith increases the Torch, uh, which may be a good play here just to remove enemy crit chance because we're already taking on a little bit of stress in this fight. Smite does 15% damage against Unholy, but these guys are not Unholy. They are human type, as you can see right underneath their name, the Brigand Bloodletter and the Brigand Fusilier. Uh, I think we're going... Uh, you were stunned recently, right? No. You point blank slot recently. Okay, his stun resistance is 50%, so we're going to go ahead and try to stun him. And he resisted it. That's super unfortunate. His debuff is minus 2 speed for 2 rounds because he used point blank shot. Alright, now we're going to pistol shot this guy. He's going to dodge it, and things are looking bad. <laughs> I don't I don't foresee us dying in this fight, but this fight could kill us if we're not careful. This game is very unforgiving if you play poorly, and at the moment, we're kind of playing poorly. So let's try to fix that. I'm going to try to Stunning Blow again. I think we may have gotten it that time. No, he resisted again. That is just unlucky, honestly. Every time you see that little thing around our head, that is, uh, that is stealth or stress being added to our characters. All right, so pistol shot on the backliner, eight damage, not bad. He's close to dying now. We're going to do, uh, as you can see here, what we're going to be doing, 15% damage to Unholy, but I don't know where the base damages are. Does this, does this tell me what I, okay, hold on, does this change whenever, oh, it does change. Okay, so we can do six to 12 damage. Uh, 4 to 8 damage, 3 to 6 damage, or we can increase Torch. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do, what, 6 to 12 damage against the guy with 18 health? 10 damage? Not bad. Just Sometimes just hitting them is the right call. <laughs> I might have been doing a little bit too much extra. As you can see, the stress is increasing. Whenever it gets up to 100, something bad happens, but we'll cover that when we get to it. For now, I'm going to keep trying to kill this backliner, because he is the higher damage source on their team. We can kill the frontliner now, and then we'll see something new. Corpses. When most monsters die, they leave corpses. Corpses act as temporary obstacles and will eventually go away on their own. You can attack corpses to destroy them faster, but often a better approach is to use a range skill, push-pull skills, or even corpse-clearing special skills that some heroes possess. Monsters killed with bleed, blight, or crits leave no corpses at all. 
So he wasn't killed with a crit or bleed or blight. So he left a corpse here. Uh, so he's still taking up the full two positions he was taking earlier. Let's say, for whatever reason, I need to be able to uh, hit this guy, but my only ability hits the front two spots, and I don't have the ability. I won't be able to attack him. I have to clear this front guy first. Uh, but that's not the case for this fight, so we're going to go ahead and wipe him out. Uh, the kill actually reduced a little bit of stress. We're still at 21, which is not great. We grabbed a torch here, some crests, and gold. We're at 1450 on gold now. Completing a quest. After you've completed the requirements of a quest, you have the option to return to town at any time. Just click the crest. You don't need to return to the starting room of the dungeon to exit. So we can just leave at any point we want to. But I'm going to stay here and continue adventuring. Because I'm not very smart. And I'm going to take Dismas here. And I'm going to... Uh, you can select which one of your units interacts with objects just by targeting them. So I'm going to attempt to bust into this thing. Something doesn't look quite right with this one. So it's a trap chest. So... Maybe we ignore it, because we're probably going to die because we have 3 HP. Uh, yeah. Either way, I don't think that ends well for us. So we're going to go ahead and click on the quest completed screen. Alright, 5,000 in quest rewards. I think that's just introducing us to the fact that uh, sometimes it's not always the best to interact with everything you see behind you. Let's take our rewards. Uh, we had a really bad run through there, so we're probably going to be gaining some negative quirks. And we'll go into the quirk system in just a moment. Okay, we got one negative quirk. He is now Manic for Money, but has also gained Warren Scrounger, 5% chance scout or scouting chance in the Warrens, and Dismas has gotten Natural Swing, giving him 5 to his accuracy. Cool, let's return to town. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Alright, so this is the Caretaker Goal screen where you can see the current quest that you have to work on. Defeat the Apprentice Necromancer, defeat the Sonorous Prophet, defeat the Necromancer, and successfully complete your first foray into the Ruins. Uh, this also gives us a little bit of an activity log for what's been going on in the area. Uh, Dismas is now an Apprentice Highwayman level 1. Reynald is now an Apprentice Crusader level 1. And Reynald and Dismas successfully escorted you to the Hamlet. Cool. Why all the concern? I've seen nothing horrific. Get help where you may. On any screen in the game, press and hold H to see contextual help for controls in that mode. Try it while in town exploring, fighting, camping, or more. Alright, so let's hold down H. Right-click on a hero in the roster to inspect their detailed character sheet. They can be renamed or dismissed permanently from there. Click on buildings to use them to interact with your heroes. Stagecoach recruit new heroes, blacksmith, upgrade heroes' weapons and armor. Guild upgrades heroes' combat skills. Survivalist, Upgrade Heroes, Camping Skills, Tavern, Send Heroes for Stress Relief, Abbey, Send Heroes for Stress Relief, Sanatorium, Treat Heroes, Quirks and Diseases, Nomad's Wagon, Purchase Rare Items. So Quirks and Diseases, Quirks is what we just got as the result of that run. We got Natural Swing for Dismas, increasing his accuracy, and then we got Manic for Money for Reynald. So we got a positive and a negative quirk. I'm just going to use those two. I know, I know Reynald got another one, but I don't remember them all off the top of my head, but you can remove them at the sanatorium, uh, sanitarium, which we haven't unlocked anything yet. The only thing we have unlocked at the moment, I believe, is the stagecoach. And men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. The stagecoach is your hero lifeblood. You need to recruit all of these heroes to fill out a party of four. Drag and drop them into your roster. Uh, you don't always need to recruit all of them. <laughs> Uh, you can definitely pick and choose. However, there are only two available to us right now, so we're going to go ahead and take this Plague Doctor. Uh, oh, we can go over the Plague Doctor ability. Sure. He is a precise striker, striker so 5% crit to melee skills, and he has 10% to death blow resist, which is fantastic. When and when your unit's health is dropped to zero, you don't die. You suffer, uh, you are what's called on death's door, and then when you take a hit again, there's a chance of, for it to be a death blow, or your unit could somehow resolve and defy that death blow and live. Uh, Deviant Taste is not allowed to visit the brothel for reasons Beth left to discretion. Hmm. And plus 20% stress in the cove. So we don't want to take him into the cove at any point, but we are going to take both of these guys. We're also getting a... Than the blood battlefields. I really like the Plague Doctors. They're cool. We're also getting a Seeker Vestal. Uh, Wield Adventurer Steady. Autom... Automatophobia. Auto automatonophobia. Oh, automatonophobia. Uh 20% stress versus humans. Okay. And minus 10% stress if torch is above 75. So we want to keep or minus 10% damage 
if torch is above 75. So that's kind of painful. We're incentivized to not have a high torch, which means we're asking for bigger enemy crits and stuff. Uh, you can also see their uh, abilities that they either have or can learn listed here. And camping skills, which we'll get into later, but we're not there yet. I'll go ahead and add her to the group as well. Upgrade the Stagecoach Network. While you're here, spend some time, or some of your starting heirlooms, on upgrading the Stagecoach Network. This will increase the number of heroes available here in the future. To upgrade, click the plus symbol on the left and click the upgrade. So yeah, we're definitely going to be doing that. Uh, Stagecoach Network increases the number of available heroes to three. Uh, we can't... So while we, while we go through the dungeons, we gather certain materials. You can see them listed here. We have busts, portraits, deeds, crests, and all of these are required to unlock certain things. Uh, we can increase the size of our hero roster to three or to 12. Uh, we don't really need that upgrade at the moment. What we want is increased stagecoat network, but we need an extra deed to get that done. So we're not going to be able to do that just yet. Uh, but we can also see on the left side here what we have available. This is the stagecoach. All these are locked, but we have this one. This is the Nomad Wagon, and here you can purchase occasional artifacts. I believe it updates every now and then. And you can upgrade this as well to increase the number of trinkets available and reduce trinket costs, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's basically just a merchant for trinkets. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. This is the graveyard, where you will see all of your fallen party members uh, and can revisit them and be sad and cry about their, about their demise. And then we also have you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Ancestors Memories. Uh, you can kind of go through and look at some of the uh, cinematics that we've seen so far, as well as the Ancestor Path. I can't say that I know too much about that, but we will find out while we play. Embark. There isn't much more that you can do in town right now, and it's time to embark on a quest. Click Embark button at the bottom of the screen. All right, uh, we're already at about a half hour on this recording, so I'm going to go ahead and edit here. Uh, just We'll consider this the tutorial episode of Darkest Dungeon, and then we will go on an actual run at the beginning of next episode and start on our path to redeeming the Justified Radiance Estate. So if you guys have enjoyed the Darkest Dungeon, it is a fantastic game, and the art style and everything are really incredible. The voice acting is also really amazing. Uh, as a fellow voice actor, I'm incredibly impressed and uh, envious. But I hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did... Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and helps me to build a fantastic community. And uh, talk to me on Twitter and Instagram. I follow all gamers back. And if I don't talk to you guys there first, then I'll see you guys in the next episode. So thank you for watching. Catch you later.